Hi. So today I'm going to talk about how you can upskill yourself if you're working in finance or you want to work in finance. How do you upskill yourself? Like finance is a very dynamic field. Um, there's something new all the time. New technology, new model, new regulation, new financial product, new compliance requirements and so on and so forth. So how do you, you know, um, how do you learn these new things, right? How do you upskill yourself? Okay. So one thing with finance is that um, it is is a very applied field. That means um, it's it's more like cooking, right? Uh, right. No matter how much time you spend reading books, uh, you have to go into the kitchen and cook for yourself a uh, couple of times or many more times just to learn even the basics of cooking, right? That's exactly what finance is, right? Um, so you really need to work in finance in order to be able to learn finance, real finance, right? The academic finance is not real finance. Many academicians do think uh, that they actually do the real finance, but that's not true. Uh, real finance is about managing money, right? Doing risk management, um, right? So that's, uh, that's actually very different from you know just uh, reading about finance or you know publishing about finance however there's one thing to note is that you know finance is uh, again as i've said is more like cooking like in cooking right you uh, you know if you do not know the basics you'll always do uh, mistakes no matter how many times you try you'll still do mistakes right it'll take a lot of time to sort of learn the basics but in, in, in cooking, actually, the stakes are not very high. The worst case scenario is that you will be, you know, making very bad food or the food will be spoiled. You know, it's not going to test well. But the, in finance, the stakes are very high. The lot of money will be lost if you commit a mistake. Right. So it doesn't give you that, uh, you know, that room to sort of uh, experiment. And uh, so you, you can't learn things to iterations. Right. So your basics have to be very, very clear. Right. So this is one field where you really have to understand the basics well before you actually, you know, work in the real world. But the actual learning actually happens in the real world. Right. Sounds a bit contrasting, but that's actually the case. Right. So how do you upskill yourself? Right. Uh, if you if you're just new and how uh, how do you uh, ensure that you learn uh, enough about your field? Well, <coughs> there are many ways, by the way. One is to do certifications. Uh, people do normally, you know, CFA, FRM. If you're in compliance, you have the CAMS certifications. There are also other certifications in compliance area. In audit, you have also various types of certifications, such as in IFRS 9, IFRS 17, you know, those IFRS related certifications you, know, you can do. Uh, in Treasury, ALM areas, you have tons of certifications. In Quantary, you have CQF, but there are also other certifications, a uh, bit scattered, uh, but there are, there are quite a few. Um, those who work in the tech area of finance, um, yeah, there are, there are also some certifications, um, okay, quant finance certifications or quant development certifications that you can do. Um, even the ones who actually work on the sales side, you know, there are many product level certifications, right? Uh, but then, you know, the ones who actually work on the front office, normally people do uh, CFA. Uh, otherwise, they just, you know, learn on the job, right? They don't uh, sort of do any certification access. But there are other ways also. The problem with certification is that, you know, most of these well-known certifications, they take a lot of time, right? CFA takes at least three years, FRM one to two years. Um, and CQF also expensive, you know. So th these are some of the issues and not everybody has got the time and money to, you know, do, do these certifications. There are sort certifications out there, many universities, especially the foreign university in the UK and uh, the, the European and the US universities, they do provide sort certifications uh, on various areas of finance. You could also try that. Uh, not very cheap, uh, I would say very uh, expensive. But the problem with this certification also is that these are taught by academicians, you know, uh, C CFA is the CFA, uh, you know, group or the CFA organization. I mean, what, you know, whatever the organization that provides CFA, uh, in my knowledge, I think this is, this was created by actual practitioners, you know, investment professionals. So is FRM. 
you know the people who actually have created a frm program were the risk manager themselves cqf guys are also practitioners many of the faculties um, i in fact know some of them when i was in london i met um, you know they are also practitioners the problem with this certification from universities is that these are taught by university professors uh, who have never worked in the real world finance so again it's it's about you know like taking class it's just about more like you know taking classes in universities so um yeah i wouldn't recommend but you know you can also check and they're also not cheap they're course pretty expensive there are other other diff- ways also to learn um you know to upskill yourself right one way is to you know attend the conferences right um there are many conferences uh, happening uh, around the year in many different places it used to be very difficult actually for uh, people especially from india to attend finance conferences in the past uh, simply because you know th- you have to be in person and in fa- in india we don't have any manner of finance conferences uh there is at least one or two i know i can i can tell you give you the details but there are not many um but there are quite uh, quite a few actually in in london in new york in other parts of europe also uh but it's difficult to attend these conferences because you have to be in in the past you used to uh, people used to physically be present in these conferences but nowadays you can also attend some of the online conferences right uh some of them are free i think most of them you have for most of them you have to pay but but it's not super expensive um uh, some can be very expensive but a lot of them actually not that expensive so that's where in india actually there is a conference at uh, organized by the reserve bank of india in collaboration with icidr which is an, uh, a research institution based out of the mumbai and iit kanpur if i am not wrong um yeah so these three uh, institution actually they they conduct uh they used to do that i'm not sure if they they, they still do that but uh, i remember attending that uh, back in 2012 in hyderabad and uh, i'm i'm not sure if it's still there but check it out you know uh, yeah this is one finance conference that uh, you know that used to take place for a couple of days three days and you you have to pay some you know as a student you have to pay like 3 to 3 4000 back in those days by the way uh, but you know if for working professionals you really have to pay like some 10 to 15000 uh, rupees um yeah okay so that's one but there are not too many by the way um but there are also some conferences from actual society of india some conferences by the cfa society of india some conferences Uh, are organized by the the chartered accountant or cost accountant societies of india there are many investment uh, uh, conferences that happen uh, in in various you know in places in india uh, not too many by the way uh, it will be really great if, if there are more uh, but unfortunately there are simply not many okay um also to let you know that i'm going to also uh, organize a conference uh, this year i'll announce that later on uh on this channel uh it will be an online one so if you want to uh attend that uh, yeah you you can attend anywhere from world uh, anywhere uh so because it's online so so you don't have to be physically present in europe you know there will be the speakers will be mostly from europe but uh, at- attendees will be from all over the world <coughs> okay so uh this is another way of uh, you know sort of uh upskilling uh, yourself um beside uh, there are other means also for instance you could also read books you know there are many really good books on finance uh, read the simple ones uh, if you want product specific uh, or very domain specific books you want to learn uh, corporate credit management you want to learn just about project finance you want to learn equity derivatives right uh, just you know do some search about books on these particular topics and just just uh, read those books uh, that's one if you are a complete beginner you may not get some of the concepts very well but if even if you get like 30 40 50% of what is there in these books it's still quite good right with the problem with quant finance is that uh, it can be very very um, abstract and and very theoretical and that's exactly the problem i have seen in many many students 
and in fact that's the reason why i've created this course of mine because i felt that a lot of the students are simply struggling with the you know highly abstract concepts in the books um so but but in other areas non quantitative parts in the risk side compliance or product side you can uh, you know read a lot of these books they are all good you could also read um, you know uh, you know some of the regulatory documents uh, from ecb from federal reserve bank of england you know the, in india you, we have the rbi right you have many commentaries from uh, these uh, institutions wealth of knowledge uh, you know make sure that you you read read about uh, the these commentaries these documents from these central banks uh, they're all good um you learn a lot of uh, things about the regulations around you know trading asset management lending recovery and so on and so forth um yeah beside that uh, you could also try um yeah yeah doing online courses short term online courses from you know various uh, places that's another way to learn or uh, upskill yourself if you're getting short term assignment internship uh, in any of these organization within the organization you're currently working at or in a different organization especially for students right if you were if you can get an internship opportunity that's always great uh, that's one of the best way to upskill yourself um also there are uh, you know um yeah that is another way to learn finance which is to just watch uh, the documentaries on finance there are so many documentaries actually on youtube that you can watch and you know gain a lot of knowledge about finance and and macroeconomics and and banking uh, trading you know watch some documentaries about financial crisis uh, the quite a number of uh, documentaries out there on on youtube free of cost so you could also watch them you could also watch some of this freely available videos uh, on youtube from various univers- us universities uk universities uh, pretty long boring but uh, if you have time patience why not you, you can also learn a lot of finance uh, someone asked me can we learn finance from the influencers i don't <laughs> know as to what finance you're talking about yes for sure personal finance is one thing which you can learn from influencer but most influencer won't be able to teach you uh, what is real world finance or finance that is done by institutions like banks and insurance companies and you know the you know asset management companies because a lot of that simply cannot be um simply cannot be taught uh, unless actually work right and the other thing is that uh, uh they they are not there are simply not too many influencers uh, as per as i know on youtube and various places who actually talk about the in- the finance that happens in institutions big institutions there are so many people talking about personal finance but beyond that i don't see many influencers on 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 youtube and other places simply because you, know, you don't have time right anybody working in the finance in the field of finance you don't have time for these things right and there is hardly any incentive so uh, so no point um okay so these are ways to upskill yourself what's best for you it's something that you will decide it will depend on how much money you can afford to spend what is the convenience uh, what is more convenient for you how much time you have do you want to go for short term courses or you want to go for long term courses are you patient enough do you have that amount of time in hand uh that you know you, you can pursue do you want something in short term or long term so a lot of things will uh depend as to what is suitable for you if you have you know any specific question you can always reach out to me uh just to know what really works for you um someone asked me whether uh, doing a part time master's degree is uh, useful or not uh, yes why not uh, but uh, make sure that uh, you don't uh, quit your job or to do a you know a part time master i am not a fan of let's say quitting jobs to go for master's degree unless you are 100% sure that this is what i want to do because this it costs a lot of money and i i don't encourage people to take that kind of risk unless you are you know financially secured you have a really good financial background support from your parents financially that's a different thing then otherwise don't take uh, too much of risk uh, 
you know, there are a lot of people in finance who don't have qualifications in finance, and they're still doing wonderfully well uh, in in finance. So, so why why worry about those you know university degrees? You can learn uh, a lot of things without spending a lot of money, without having to commit to this uh, year or two year programs. Okay, all right. So that's what I wanted to talk on in this video. If you have questions, as always, let me know in the comment section and. As I've said, I'm, I'm going to announce about the conference, the finance, quant finance conference that I'm going to organize this year. I'll let you know uh, the details and how you can register for it. Uh, I, I look forward to you know see you in that conference. Uh, but I, I'm going to share the details in another video. I'm still in the preparation phase. It's still in the preparation phase. I'll let you know. All right. Thanks, guys.